Cool. Hello and welcome back. Hello, hello. Game number three, Rochester versus McMaster, 1-1 in the series. Yeah, much closer series than I think either of us thought coming into this. For sure. Yeah. McMaster's looks a lot better than, than we actually had imagined. And the, the implication that I got off when they walked up to me, they didn't seem like they were too confident, but they're looking pretty good in these last two games, at least the second one in particular. First one, first one too. First one they had good moments. They're a pretty good team. Yeah. I think uh, I, we said it to death at this point. It's like RIT, I think Evan is the best player overall in this series. Sure. Like from a pure mechanical standpoint. But when it comes to like the team fights, and just like the flat out rotations, it feels like McMaster is just a lot further ahead. Yeah. Just, I mean, it, it really feels like they're more of a team. Uh, that's usually the way I put them. Like, this is more, this seems more like individual play, other ones like a team. Yeah. Rochester wants to drag this into like a pub style. Yeah. Just get your two course farmed, snowball into a win. And McMaster is like, guys, we're going to five man everything. <laughs> <laughs> so for this game, it was McMaster's who chose. Uh, Radiance, and I believe his second pick was taken by Rochester. Yeah, I was trying to remember. Really, that's how that went. Pretty sure. That's surprising to me. Because they had side priority. Master chose side priority. They took Radiant. Hmm. Okay, that makes a little bit more sense. And then uh, RIT had pick priority. So same bands, all three games. Yeah. Will we get a Techies? Will we get a Pango? No. Will we get a Willow? Maybe we get Pango or Why Willow. Why not Willow? Willow's good. Well, I think Willow's Pango's good. even better now, too. What got changed on him again? He got buffed, right? Did he? I think it's more just like it's oh, easier for changed. you to go for the second pull. That's right. Yeah. You don't get, well, Pango got changed a lot, actually. Yeah. You don't get canceled anymore by Roots or Disables. OK. That's a pretty big buff. It's pretty huge. So your ult goes off like pretty much no matter what? Ult goes off no matter what. That seems fair. All right, so McMaster. Slight changes. With their standard opener of openers. Yeah, again, again the clockwork. I mean, why not, right? Vinar's. He's been, he's been doing pretty damn well with it. Yeah. I think the side of Rochester, though, like Wirt and Doggy have a lot. It, their game is like a lot more complicated because their cores prefer playing a little bit more solo, so they can't really follow around. So the game is a little bit more complicated, I think. Like, whereas McMaster, it's pretty straightforward, right? Like, if you're Bryn, you just you sit behind the core, set up for kills. Yeah. No, definitely. That's that's like what I was kind of like touching on toward like the tail end of it before. It's like I see like these McMasters, the two supports running around, they're making plays all over the place. I see Rochester just like evidence doing his own thing, like as like one of the cores. Yeah. The two supports are trying to make plays around their cores, but they're all playing separately. So bait. They take away the Bane, this time from McMaster. Yeah. yeah it was really annoying for, uh, for the play style, I think, of Rochester. Uh -huh. it's like, if you like playing that solo remaining. go around the map, you hate heroes like Bane. BKB Piercer, uh, Fiend's Grip just destroys you. Sleep is really annoying to play against too. Prevents you from playing that like pub style. Like yeah, you exactly. Right? You always get picked off by, by this hero. So what did they take uh, game one? It was uh, Witch Doctor. Witch Doctor, yeah. yeah. That's what I was thinking. Dire team back. Like Master though, <laughs> Chug. They go for their Chug first to open her. I've never seen a hero get bodied so hard and then come back. He was like highest net worth in the game at the end of it. I'm yeah, sure. he was. You were saying like he's like he's like bottom three right now. Oh, he's like bottom three right now, and he catches up. There's literally just like two kills, catapulted him forward. Yeah, uh, there was something that Fluff used to tell me like way back in the day. He was like, any any good any decent mid player can snowball out of a lane and just carry a game. He's like the really talented ones are the ones that like you get really crushed and you still have like tons of impact. Who's a good example of that right now in Pro Dota? Nowadays, it feels like everyone's a lane dominator. Everyone's a lane dominator. Like all, because you think of like the old top teams, and I just think of like no one and stuff, and I'm like, I don't think I ever see Ten no one lose his lane. Remaining. Same with like Miracle or. Same with like Miracle and stuff, yeah. yeah. Maybe like Matama Man would be the closest when Matsu plays those mid heroes. Yeah, I could see that. 
Oh, Miracle is always like Terra Blade or something. <laughs> so it's a little bit different. Yeah. Oh, maybe Pycat for me, actually. I've been, I've been liking Pycat a lot in the last few months. He's been really owning. Even when he's like shut down, he comes back and does good for his team. Yeah. Pycat's definitely Ten been one of the better remaining. things about Optic so far. Yeah. Five seconds remaining. This time they give respect. They ban the Tidehunter and the Abaddon. So, uh oh, that's all I know that. That's all I've seen actually from Luki. <laughs> I actually don't think I've seen him play anything but Underlord, which is banned. Tidehunter, Bad which is banned, team. and Abaddon, which is banned. They completely they phased him out. He's yeah, he's phased out. So one of the, some of the, the other options are Radiant pretty limited. Pick. It's Pango. Oh, the Death Prophet gets through this game. Okay, so RIT are so completely switching. Changed. They're like, guys, we're getting out team fought pretty hard right now. Interesting. Have they taken Death Prophet? They They had they definitely have played it before. I was looking at just Ten one specific uh, match for them. We, we don't have too much to go based off of. They Five have not, no. Not that I see at least. I mean if you're a mid player, you play DP. I mean you definitely yeah. it's, it's it's been banned a lot of the games, they're taken by other teams, so. I like that though. I think uh, they're starting to realize like they're catching on. They can't play this. I, even game one, I think reasonably they could have lost. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean that was like small mistakes by McMaster's. And if they hadn't made those, they would have won the game. Yeah. So if you're Rochester, I think you you're like, okay, our pre-existing strategy is not good. It's like we can't just decide that we're gonna outscale them. It doesn't work like yeah. that anymore. And good teams make adjustments. I hope Rochester doesn't watch the VOD and get really sad. Why would they? What? Why would they get sad? I think I feel like we're being a little harsh on them. Oh. But it's because the info pack. It's because the info pack. The info pack literally said like these guys look like they're playing in a different league. When when you set up a statement like that, I'm expecting some two O's. So what do we? Where's Carlo? Where's Carlo? Where's yeah, Carlo? Carlo? <laughs> <laughs> Just Carlo. So yeah, which doctor we claimed again? And our, there's the willow. Okay, cool. So sinking will be core. So willow bane supports. Any cool combos we have between these? Nothing crazy. No coil kind of willow combo. Well, coil death prophet's pretty nice though. Yeah. Willow uh, terrorize plus death prophet. Really like willow as a hero. Yeah. It's great Five against Chug too. Remaining. It's like you're not thinking about it. You get caught. You just die. I mean, that hero as a whole is just unbelievable. I mean, you also, if you try to Omni Slash a Willow, she goes into Shadow Realm and. <laughs> Good times. There goes your Omni Slash. Can't do anything about it either. So, what's the option? It's like what? Pangolier? McMaster is. Same cores. Stick, stick to their guns. They draft like the. Is it, it's gotta be Pango as the last pick, right? For what? For uh, McMaster's. Is it? I'm looking at Luki's heroes. Ten seconds Ooh. remaining. Plays a lot of Pangolier. It's a pretty good back game Five too. Seconds remaining. It could be a good back game. He did used to yeah, he used to play good bat on a bat. That's a good point. What rank is he right now? Radiant Does it actually say? Yeah. Uh, it just says he's six thousand seven hundred more. Eighty seven. It's good. That's how Luki Luki, so. I actually can probably find your other. Did you actually end up finding high end? Ten seconds remaining. Don't you just find uh, McMaster? No, it doesn't work. Oh, Five really? Yeah. They have no no previous games apparently. Huh? When I look it up, I tried really hard to find their previous games and it's like impossible. Hmm. It shows up with games from like a couple months ago. I think it, I don't know. Radiant team pick. So they banned the bat. So they also thought that it was a pretty good back game for McMaster's. And what could be the other option? The ban life stealer. Yeah. It does look like a pretty decent pango game. I think it's a pretty good pango game, right? Would have been a better bat rider game. Yeah, bat rider looked incredibly good. They have no Ten saves against bat. Remaining. Yeah. They have no saves with a death prophet too. Five seconds remaining. One of the other options for McMaster's. Offlaners. What even counts as an offlaner now? I feel like all I saw last tournament that I was at was Underlord. 
I mean, all the better options have been banned Dying out. Yeah. I think it's got to be Fang, though, right? Oh, Omni. 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 Yeah, he got hit with some nerfs, too, right? He got a uh, cooldown nerf on Purification, if I recall Omni gets right. nerfed every single he patch. Gets anyway. Yeah, cooldown on Purification from 11 to 14. It scales per level, and base armor reduced by one. And then, of course, the other changes from before was, like, cast range changes on his heal, mana cost changes on Repel. They're just like, how bad can we make this hero before... <laughs> And doesn't that mean that he was broken? If they, they give him five consecutive nerfs and he still has potential in the game? Does that mean that Pudge is broken? I that hero was definitely over nerfed, I think. <laughs> for sure. I, I actually kind of feel bad for you on that one. Feel like, bad for me? Why? Because you're a Pudge, player. Pudge figure. Hey, you like Pudge. <laughs> He's still fine. Is he, though? No. And isn't that hero laning phase just like impossible to make work? Yeah, it's like it's a, it, when you pick Pudge, it's like picking Ricky. You're just ruining the lanes for your team, and then later <laughs> everyone on, everyone just start starts pissed fun. off. Everyone just starts pissed off, and then you start having fun later. It's like you're this level three Pudge walking around. You can't kill anybody. It doesn't feel good. You just start pinging, and you're like, I'm really close to my tranquil boots, and then I might be able to catch up to somebody. So minute remaining. I think they could use some frontliner. Protects his death profit a bit. You think you do uh, aggro again? I'd imagine so, right? If you're I willing to do a last that, game. Yeah, I think that they will. You just put Jug into DP. Just keep giving high end like the worst possible matchups. It's gonna work, right? Oh, void. Ooh. So they've got pretty good stuff inside of the Chrono. They've got death profit sinking in Willow. They have much better team fight than in yeah. both games combined. Yeah, you can so you can tell that they address that like. Void DP. Looks like they're not going to be going for the uh, outplaying here this time around. Looks like they're just going to yeah. try to just take the straight on fights. I think this is a much better idea. And they were getting crushed in both games in the mid game. <gasps> it's Core Willow. It's a Core Willow, right? Huh? Xanthos was playing the Doom both games. I thought it was actually going to be an offlane SK. I thought it would be offlane sinking too. Willow's not a bad uh, offlaner in a game like this. She's got good oh. animation. Wait. I'm, I'm mind gaming myself, actually. I was like, wait, what if they go aggro now? You do not want to put Void against the Omni, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Like one so on one or anything? You put the Willow in a 1v1 <laughs> versus the Omni somehow. Does that work even? Is that even. That doesn't sound good. Actually, I don't know. I can't tell if that beats. I, I, you would have a better idea of this than I would. I don't, think I've, ever seen, I don't think I've ever seen this matchup. I'm pretty sure Omni just wins that. Okay, they're for the third for game in a row. They're going to grow. What are we going to get? What response will we get? What you'd like to see out of uh, Rochester in situations like this is to go for like a really aggressive smoke early on and try to scout it out, I think. Then uh, go for the play yourself so that you can see what the lane setup is. It'd be an easier way to do things for yourself. Same wards coming out, too. Agree, disagree? Um, no, I definitely. I think you should. The problem is that their level one's not really the greatest. That's the only thing I was looking at. Their level one smoke in comparison is really weak versus like Juggernaut. But I do think they need to be able to scout the lanes. I mean, you want to be able to see the lanes. It looks like so they're reading this, though. They're, they're, they're doing exactly what we're talking about, the Willow versus Omni. At least we'll get to see that. It's an Omni in the safe lane, though, so I can imagine he's just going to free farm. Yeah. Maybe Willow will free farm too. We will find out. Looks like they're, they're both like contemplating. They're like, do we want these lanes? I don't think we want these lanes. All right, let's switch it up. But this is being spotted a bit here. The battle begins. So they know do you think the Omni down. cares either? Well, I don't think so. I think the Omni's fine with this. They just got three uh, bounty runes too as a result of the, this move. Yeah. Take your tribute. Void should be able to free farm here, but Gyro's going to get full free farm too. This might be the better lanes though, I think, for Rochester though, right? Because then at least they're getting two lanes ahead. Yeah. Because I feel like if they did it the other way... And they won two lanes. Maybe they even won like two and a half last game. Their Doom was doing quite well against the uh, Tidehunter. Uh, and once again, Evident just starts the lane pretty dominant. 
Yeah. Stun flies out onto this Omni. Doggy, come on, man. He he stole the range creep last. Range creep blasted with that stun. I know whenever I do that with my core players, they get real angry at me. Yeah. They ping. They ping you. The the passive aggressive ping. Yeah. And it's actually pretty aggressive. It's pretty aggressive. <laughs> There's no <laughs> passive. <laughs> If you're Willow, though, you gotta hate this. And Omni, I don't think cares that much. I genuinely think Omni doesn't care about the slain. He's got it at his tower too, so he's getting experience. Yeah, Willow's trying to get it pulled in, but they're doing a good job. December is trying to deny as much as possible. He's gonna spam ping in the side to try to get the pull off as well. Willow will get a decent amount now. Yeah, they're gonna double waver now onto the tower. This is what uh, I think. You look for a dive. I don't think you want to pull this as Vinar. Yeah. You would just, uh, you, can. you would glyph and then just go for it? I think you glyph and you dive. Until it, but now that you see Sanking rotation, I think you pull side. Oh, now the now the Omni is going to be even happier. Like, you could potentially just win two lanes even harder now as a result of this, I think. Like, if you're if you're in this position, don't you not make this move? What, send the Sanking top? Yeah. I don't think you send the Sanking top. I think Luki's already getting so much down here, too. So you probably don't care. Well, Omni's fighting versus a Bane. Oh. Yeah, I think he had that one. Bane is quite strong, though. I meant the wart. I mean, uh, the Bane. I thought the Bane had that. Yeah. Nice to me. Coming close, doggy. Getting chased out here a bit. Yeah, I'm wondering why they sent the Sanking toward top. I think I it maybe they didn't want the dive to happen under the Willow. And he doesn't really have a play otherwise, though. Right? Like, I where? Guess. I'm trying to think of, like, what would have been the better move for him to make. And I genuinely can't think of one. Dive up the top. Shadow Realm's up. This part of the problem is... He's got a Fairy Fire. He should fly. Stun's gonna fly out too. They might even get... Sure, nope. Doggy's getting pretty low here. By the way, I've seen so many Omni versus uh, Faceless Void 1v1s. I've seen like 20 of them. And I will say that Omni crushes that lane. Omni does. It's not a 1v1. Yeah, that's why the Bane has to stay here. Like, even if they're tri laning up at top, and it is making it hard for the Sanking, like, I guess the Bane can't rotate. I guess maybe it is the right play for the Sanking to go top. But I feel like maybe he just wants to be able to like, pull and even stack and do Sandstorm or something, because I actually don't see a place for him to be. Like, stack, pull, just get your levels. Yeah. And then just have a TP available for the lanes. Cause, uh, he doesn't have like a place in this game really right now, until later on. Eradicate will get Eradicate will get full free farm mid lane as well. Mr. Evident. Commandingly dominating this mid lane. Yeah. It's expected though in the lane. Plus he is quite a good player. Yeah. Xanthus is gonna go down up at top, same time. Uh, they do manage to grab the witch. He died to caustic, I guess. Yeah, I was yeah. trying to find I was like, wait, what, what the heck? How'd he die? Doggy's even gonna grab both the uh, bounty runes. As a result of this movement, the Bane. Oh, back to back bashes by Eradicate Bottom. A third one? No way. Nah. Up at top, Clockwork already up to level three. I'm wondering what this Willow is gonna be able to do as a core instead of a Sanking. That's, that's the biggest thing for me. Is like I always try to like th think about the big picture of why they would make it. Alright, let's let's make a core willow rather than a core sinking. Maybe they're just trying to get the better uh, matchups. I think so. I guess I guess that's probably the biggest thing, but it feels like it's gonna hurt, because then they're gonna rely a lot on this void to get the initiations off early. Because sinking's gonna have a later blink dagger. Where? Uh-oh. Nice rotation. Gonna get the sleep off, but Word is almost definitely dead. One more hit will do it. Even gonna give the kill to his Omni Knight who's struggling a little bit. This is mid lane. Vinar constantly with those rotations, so. Yeah, always finding the right move. And Rochester right now, they need to find a way to get uh, their two supports more involved in this game. Or this series, I should say. Yeah, that's, I feel like it's something we've been harping on nonstop. The support comparison. But their core is still doing just, just great. 
Emperor almost has a four level advantage over the uh, Juggernaut. But if she skills up the exorcism, just gonna go for threatening with this catapult wave. Where it's Invis too, he's scouting the rotation over from Vinar. A decent amount of tower damage. Cliff will be forced. Time is money. Things are going to even out a little bit here. Sand King still trying to get his level 3. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm feeling like the Sand King and Willow are going to have a really hard game. Yeah. I think it's kind of a product of like the way that they had a lane, though. Yeah. It's a problem. That's why I didn't like the Sand King rotation up at top. But, I mean, you kind of have the right point, too, because like, what is he going to do at bottom? They weren't going to yeah, get a kill on this Omni Knight. Maybe he rotates mid a little bit more and pressures this uh, Omni. Like we talked about, like Omni has problems when you got the early levels of spin, you can't really do much. Not a jog, yeah. Yeah. So maybe right, but like that's so awkward. Like what he's gonna—he's rotating mid to secure his death proper. He's winning, right? Like yeah. he's just—it's awkward. It is definitely awkward. The DP is already doing really well in the lane. Oh, they got like 20 more CS than uh, this Juggernaut. Like, if it did for the third game in a row, is gonna stomp his lane without right. pretty much any help. He's got Phase Null. And Aquila, while well, you look at the jog, he has Aquila brown boots. Yeah, no boots. Yeah, they're pretty close to it. Bottom lane. Sanking's porting down. This is the problem with the lane is that, like, you just heal. Just heal spam, and he has to defensively use um, time walk. Do they even have the damage for this? They think they do. He's got 1,100 HP. How many bashes in a row do you think it would take to get five that kill? or something. You think only five? The five's a lot. You think so? I think it would Maybe take more. more. Than <laughs> right, we'll oh, those cogs though. Uh, it's gonna be a two-man stun after. Oh. Uh oh. Brain Sap's not even gonna finish the job, and now Doggy gets turned on. That was really ambitious. Yeah. They're trying to, because they have two supports down here, they feel like they have to make a move. Yeah. It's most of the problem. Top lane. Oh, awesome. oh man. That was scary, though. They actually bring down the Witch Doctor bottom, too. Doing that. Yeah. It's a nice return for them. And that's, it's already a Willow level 6, so maybe this could be where they can look for pickoffs. Like, Willow versus Gyro. Gyro can get solo killed by this Willow if he does not watch his positioning. The trade between the old mid lane. Omni Slash bounces twice to creeps. Oh Evident. No. Is he gonna get both here? He is. He is, but tower, but he's creep. The drain off the creep will keep him alive. He's alive. The unfortunate. If either. If Only either one bounce. bounce hit. Yeah, the two bounces went to the creeps. It would have been a kill, no problem. Yep. But that's that advantage, right? If, yeah. you, if you had done maybe a little bit better in the laning phase, then maybe they would have had that damage threshold. Level 9 now on Death Prophet. He can be sorry. Yeah, Jug's to level 8, but pretty big there for Evident. Snowballing as a Death Prophet is the dream. Yeah. You get Yules and items like, um, what is it, Aeon Disc? Yeah, Yules, Aeon Jug Disc. Jug does not scare you anymore. I mean, Team Fight White, his team still has issues, though. Well, he went Medallion. Just went for some straight armor. I like it a lot. I'm always fine with, like, any of these type of like Yules into Solo Crest, Yules into like Hood or Pipe. Dep it all depends on the build, what you're versed more. Yeah. Pipe if you see more magic damage, or Hood if you see more magic damage. Yeah, exactly. In this mid lane. Yeah. Yeah. Magic damage to the cask. Very nice cask. That cask was like as fortuitous as it's gonna get. Top lane. That Bedlam. Just trying to. To work on to December there, but couldn't quite close the gap. Yeah, it's the scary thing about the matchup is even if you're really farmed as a gyrocopter, Radiance bottom tower you're, yeah, you're always attack. at risk. Every time that bed lumps up. And that is the absurdity of this hero. It did get 
rework a little bit, which I like. I like how they, they made it like Skyrath ulti. Remember how Skyrath was like, the damage would be dealt after one second and then they changed it yeah. to being like 1.4 and that was like the big change. They did similar to Dark Willow December. Pretty far up here. Next, we're just going to use a Retreat, Terrorize, Doggy. He's maledicted here though. And will get brought down with that Cog. Right one more hit. But Evident wraps oh. around behind and actually finds Goes to the long wrap around. Arrow. And he's looking for more. He even pops the ulti. Look at that damage. Oh, Medallion plus that plus 50 Radiant damage talent. Under attack. And you've got Bryn hiding in the corner right now. Oh. Good nice sleep. sleep. Move off. Ledger. Mid lane. I like this. Evident is being a lot more uh, hands-on in this game. Yeah. He's like moving for his team. He, I think he realized like he can't just play that style where he dominates his lane and then plays a solo game. Like, he's trying to enable his team a lot more in this game. Oh my god, Luki. Luki's insane. He walked up with like one hit and then got bashed and almost died against the purify off. Oh, but now Xanthos comes in. Luki, 50 HP, 60, gets the full on dodge. He's trying to go for the bait. But yeah, like, I like what you're talking about though with Evident. Is the last game with uh, Shaofi, he just felt like he was just straight farming. If he had maybe gone that Shadow Blade earlier, oh my god, is he gonna just get a kill on the clockwork here? Yes. Would have gotten on the Witch Doctor too if he got the Spirit Siphon off yeah, first. Yeah, he got it all. I'll take your tribute. Like now he's starting to dominate. Yeah. In this series, this is the this is the game that we kind of expected out of him in this series so far. It's like, man, clutch players. They come into decisive games, Yannis, and they make the plays that get your team ahead. Yeah, I mean, they, if you're not, if you're top net worth, you're gonna have to be making plays like this. You can't be dying like that last game, right? Dude? Yeah, that Shadow Phoenix. Well, he was definitely cocky. So much. He could, yeah, he was very cocky. This game around, he's just playing a lot more careful. Yeah. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. It seems like they're playing like this. They don't feel like they're super at rush or anything, but they're just like, all right, we're gonna use our ulties when they're up. Yeah. Like they just drop this very team fight oriented draft. It has a good play set at all stages of the game. I like this draft so much more. Radiance Would you like it more with sinking as far? You think, or are you okay with the Willow support? I think the I'm Willow kind of okay with this. Yeah, I think this this is okay. Like, I, I think Rochester's biggest issue. Oh. Oh, just gets another kill. I, I'd say their biggest issue is that sometimes they have a hard time making sure that their supports also have a good game, uh, which is like problematic in this game too. But their cores are doing a much better job, I think, of adjusting to what uh, McMaster was doing. Because this is the first game where they went for the aggro themselves to avoid. Yeah. Like they're they're finally adjusting based on what their team their opponents are doing. I see them also playing around each other more. Like, look at top. Doggy was already set up to try to protect Evident here. Evident might still go down here. Damage. Some really nice cogs. Is he gonna be enough with the siphon? He's really tanky. Oh, that gyro was gonna go down too. My. God. He almost just got that kill too on uh, onto that Omni Knight. I thought he may actually go down. Oh, in this mid lane. mid lane, they get a trade, trade for trade. Okay. Oh. I think he Omni slashed and, and bounced up into, into the, the, the root, right? Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the, the, thank you. <laughs> I actually can't believe Evident lives there. That's massive. Level 14 already. Yeah. I really, I mean, he's just playing so much better Yeah. in this game. He is focusing on this top lane. Uh, he's allowing his void to just kind of do his thing. Yep. And it's, I, was, I was touching on it, like, as that happened. To, I, I thought he was still going to die, but they're playing more around each other. Like, yeah. The last time around, it was like a core was farming by himself. No one's sitting behind. That time, Evident was baiting a bit. The, the Sanking was in position. Doggy was waiting for that play. And they got trades all around the map. Yeah. Even though High End got the kill onto the Willow, like, they got the return. Nice. Denied. And now this bottom tower is just really yeah. hard pressure. Do you chrono there if you're the void? You might. That was that was a tempting one. I saw that one. You'd get a kill for sure. I think you want a core. Which talent did he take, by the way? On void? You usually take the... Oh, he actually took the strength. Okay. I've been seeing most people take the damage now at 10. And the then damage the into the health? Yeah, damage into health. I'm okay with it though if you go Mask of Madness. 
effect, yeah. Evident coming in from behind. Team Swift catches Luki. The Casco will bounce, but he is silenced on the Omni for the time being. They are able really to find Evident, though. Evident is maledicted. We'll get brought down. Yeah. So there's a Chrono. Grab him. Two man Chrono. Here it goes. And the back line, though, high end. They just don't have enough damage right now. The Witch Doctor heal is cutting through all of this. The cast going to be pretty successful at stopping this aggression right now. They're on top of this Willow. High end. Doesn't quite have the ult yet. He's still going to go for the commitment. One more second. Does have it. Is going to get the kill. Oh! Doggy. Doggy, not like this. Look at high end go. Just going to go for the spin. Aggressive play and any set. Yeah. Well, all right. Thought that was going to be a lot better for uh, for McMath or uh, for, Rochester. for Rochester. Yeah. I think uh, Evident just got isolated on the low ground, and uh, Omni Knight got isolated on that high ground. But I think the Death Prophet's a little bit more important than the Omni Knight. See that engaging too. Team. The Witch Doctor heal is so valued. Yeah. The Void just didn't deal enough damage. And, I mean, the Maledict too, again, even though it's, you know, that got changed. That 20 second cooldown when he's maxed, it doesn't matter. He just throws out Death Prophet and Death Prophet died because of it. So you have it in actually queues up a BKB now to deal with all that magic. Between that Gyro as well as the Witch Doctor. I like that decision. There's no hard initiation for him to have to worry about. Like, the, there's no Ravage or anything like that this time around. It's a very defensive offlaner. Their only initiation on the side of, um, on the side of... Uh, McMaster is this clockwork hook. Yeah. But if you can, if you don't get bursted during that time, you're always just going to get BKB into Spirit Siphon, right? Yeah, there's it's no like, yeah, no hard lockdown. It's just, it's just the hook shot. Every soul, you're always going to get your BKB off. He's, uh, he's serious now. Yeah. He's like, no joke items. Evident of last game would have like Hurricane Pike DP queued up. <laughs> but this time he's like, I'm going to carry this game. McMaster, I think he's starting to respect them a little bit more. I think so too. Their yeah. whole team is. Their whole team's playing a lot more at, like, in unison. They're all playing yeah. together rather than making all these like individual plays. Oh, this will be Doggy now with a Blink Dagger, so they can look to get aggressive. Again, Colonel's going to be at the ready too. And I think that's Shadow Blade. So. They've got a lot of options here with that Medallion and Exorcism. They look, could look for Roche. Oh, this be a really fight. cool Roche. Yeah, they can look for a fight right after too with the Chrono. Not pretty fast. They're gonna do this really quickly. The smoke is out. The rocket goes over. Has they vision know. of them. Uh oh. There's a commitment here. Cask is bouncing. The high ground. The ward doing a lot. The chrono flies onto the side. Who gets the Aegis? It is evident. Right before he dies. Yeah. Oh, this willow. It's quite low. Now no, evident in the middle of dies. everything. They don't get anybody. They lose the death prophet twice. They're still on the pursuit. As Wart does have wand charges, should be just fine. It was so awkward. They had that like perfect vision. They got the clockwork rocket in, and then who did he end up even chronoing? He chronoed to the side. He chronoed to the side, and it, he couldn't even get a kill out of it. Yeah. And Evident, sure, he gets the Aegis, but I dies. think even in that situation, you might just chrono into the Roche pit. I think you just chrono right on top of yourself, yeah. right? Get the Roche, secure that, then take the fight, see what happens. Uh, pick up your Shadow Blade Eradicate. No. Oh. Uh, he forgot to pick up his Shadow Blade at that base still. He's had that for a while now too. Yeah, he's had it for at least a minute and a half. It's just sitting at base that uh, Claymore. They need uh no, I can't get it. Uh, they need the BKB. Doggy. Trying to juke to get the blink off. Gets cancelled again. Barely oh, gets touched. Oh my god, it's like quarter of a second. Yeah, it's like the storyline of high end. Be his team's Porous core. Somehow catch back up. Somehow catch <laughs> Get back into the game. Uh, I mean, I don't even disagree with uh, the decision making from Rochester there, going for the Roshan. Like, they no, do I it very was, quickly. I think that was a very good Rosh. Yeah. Uh, whoever made that call was like a very good call. Just. The execution after that, I think, was a little bit sloppy, and uh, McMaster played their hand very well. The Witch Doctor cast into it. Yeah, the, the rocket the into cast. Yeah. yeah, that was that was huge. Then he uh, ults into the pit. Yeah. Healing shock. 
now the BKB is out for evidence, so a little bit more protection. The Omni Slash is definitely still hurting, though, even though he's got the medallion. He's got Yule Scepter, too, though. Yeah. As long as his, uh, just be his button pressing is really good. And he's still top of the net worth right now, has had a very good game. Oh, they're gonna catch here. They're looking for Brain, and they're also looking for Vinar. Maybe a bit of exorcism, and it looks like they will be able to get at least one of them. Bakum the bash? will get away for a second. The BKB by Death Prophet. Ami Slash comes out, though. The Chrono? Oh, oh no! Oh, he's still alive! <laughs> oh! But the two man stun from Toggy and the Epicenter, that's gonna nab them some kills. The Repel onto the Ami. The Gyro Gyro is doing work. He's hitting hard now, and that is going to send back Rochester. They do lose two heroes. That Chrono... There was a couple of things that happened there, though, because they, they pump fake the Terrorize, too, and I yeah. think if he actually Terrorized on the Chrono, the Jug doesn't get that last hit to kill the Death Prophet, because he got an auto attack after the Chrono wore off. Yes. I think if you just Terrorize before the Chrono wears off, he's going to get away as that Death Prophet. It's going to be close, but... All he needs is that half second. At, yeah, that half second. That's literally it. He gets out, he can Spirit Siphon turn around. Yeah. The Spirit Siphon drains so much. Yeah. But, I mean, costly. That's rough. Yeah. We thought that this Death Prophet was unkillable, but in that position right there, she got isolated out. I'll take that. But he really needs a Solar Crest to deal with that Omni. Doggy, again, getting spotted out here by December. He's got the blink up, but the Rocket will chase. Whoa, whoa, oh, oh. That looks crazy. He's gonna die though. He's got sandstone. Man, he's just gonna stop the second, uh, the second missile is gonna hit him. Dude, you gotta believe. I gotta believe. Gotta believe. Sandstone heals you now. <laughs> 200 HP a second. It's the only way that that would work reasonably. <laughs> it's a bottom lane. Bottom. This would be a nice pick. An art. Gonna get the cogs off, but more than enough damage on the side. This trade happening though, they're getting tier two. But Evident is pressuring his own. High end is gonna mop this up. This is a pretty December goes to deal with that. This is a pretty good timing for Evident still here though. Like, even though he died those last two times, he's about to be level 18 and about to have Solar Crest. Or, well, level 18 Solar Crest and then that level 20. When you get that level 20 talent, that's the big thing I talk to a lot of players who play Death Prophet. It's like, you get that 500 health, then you really become that. Like, God tier. What is the other one? God tier hero. The cooldown on Crypt Swarm? Swarm? Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen anyone take it. Crypt Swarm would have to have no cooldown. <laughs> Just zero. Zero. Spammable. Oh, here we go. Evident. Evident gets in there. The sleep onto the Omni 2. Terrorize. That's the BKB, there. but oh, he's just the, dead. The Death Ward. Now oh, comes up. There's a healing ward in. on the side. Here comes the Sand King 2, Doggy. Gonna land, but high end's in there. And now the Void isolated out. He's gonna Roll go down dead. too. Doggy's down. That is gonna be a five man wipe. Five for zero. Five for zero. What is happening right now to Rochester? It felt. It, it did feel a bit forced, I'll be honest. Like, he's a sliver away from level 18 on Death yeah. Prophet. Like, literally a sliver away. Click the gyro. They take the engagement. I guess it's just because gyro didn't have BKB, yeah, he, but he it's right next to an Omni. Right, so it, it does make it a lot harder, and then it gets it gets awkward too because they throw the chrono they're gonna go high ground. There's no chrono. There's no. Um, there's no yeah, deal. No yeah. And then th that last fight, they throw the chrono, but healing ward was on the side. Yes. And witch doctor had healing on too, so the damage was just not there. And death ward just I mean, death ward actually killed him. Yeah. Bryn has played. Bryn's been a fight. Yeah, his fight position in this game, and I. Right now, it just feels like things are a little bit off of them as the stun gonna lay into you. The Juggernaut this could be a kill. He's still two seconds away from having a spin up, but there's so much healing. And the Greaves get popped. Nobody on the side so far dead. Nar does go down. Evident getting focus fired here. Got the Terrorize. It's gonna land onto two. Gonna send at least the Omni back. And the Fiend's Grip is there. This is probably gonna be a kill on the Juggernaut. They needed to bring him down. The stun does connect onto the gyro at the same time. Everyone pushing forward now. Nice silence from the Death Prophet, evident. They get the repel, but one more right click should do it. One more. They need everything that they can get here. Should be able to get this Omni Knight too, and they will. Yeah. Uh, they don't lose Rex. 
They lost. Okay, they lost they the lost melee rex. Yeah. But not the worst trade in the world for Rochester. Like they can still win a team fight. Is the scary part. Still a bit painful upbringing. We'll just watch him die slowly. Oh, oh, oh! Got the siphon off this time, though. Now he will die much faster. Okay, now he's definitely dead. Oh, pops the heal. <laughs> Tries to go for the outplay, and that's like a pseudo team wipe. Because Vinar did die in the beginning. Oh, oh and Vinar. Speaking of him, back to back. He's deaths. dead again. He's waiting for the bedlam. So Evident gets the kill again. So that whole gold swing change has uh, been negated. And same with that whole experience swing. Pretty much at zero again. He's proud to be back and forth. Actually, Evident gets a lot out of that. I think that's the solar crest done and level 20. So level 3 ulti plus that talent. Now he's a lot tankier to be able to He's at 2,500 gold too. Here comes the Ek. The epicenter, it is gonna land. The okay. current combo is there. If they can get the kill onto the Omni too, this is McMaster fading a little bit, and that's gonna be another kill. With the exorcism popped, the Omni gonna get gripped up at the end. No oh risking it at all. That is two core pickoffs in a row. That is seven heroes dead in a row for McMaster. Dude, look at the. I mean, just look. I'm just looking at the kill feed. Yes. There's like 14 or 15 kills in the last like two or three minutes. Everyone's just running at each other. But Roshan's gonna be the bigger objective here. Exorcism's only got very little duration, and it's not enough anyway, so 50 seconds. Got a lot of gold now on Evident. Yeah. Should be a lot happier, despite the Rax disadvantage. They are up in gold. Go. Solo pressed. Can be done. Oh, yeah. I, I, I think I like that better. Good guys, just full soul boost there. So the uh, Kila. McMaster's gotta calm down right now. Like, they're playing really split. They take one bad fight, and all of a sudden it feels as though uh, they're not reading the game the same way. If this gyro's items look so weird now. Their, their positioning is really hard, to be honest with you, still. Like, even though they've been getting like some of these good fights, they have to have very good uh, evidence actually getting down on top. It has the PKB available, but he just, once again, dies. OK, if that's the Roche. You would just swing the game right back. And it is. Rush respawns. What's happening? Jackpot. Master, I mean, they rest away the lead again. I don't know if they even know about the Rush, though. I don't think so. This is like super back and forth, though, between both. He's getting picked off constantly. Yeah, the Void gonna push in mid. They're just. They're looking for high ground. They're not even looking for that Rush. 45 seconds. No, no DP. Did the Clockwork TP back, by the way? Oh, it. look what he's doing. He's trying to cancel the TP of the sword right now, playing around with him. Trying to see if they can force this high ground. Spin is going to be committed. Look at this. He's, he's, he's still stalking the Void in the back lines, by the way. So Radicate's trying to find a place so he can get a TP off. He will finally be able to. 20 seconds until Death Prophet respawns. It looks like McMaster's is satisfied. I feel like they, they should have gone for Roche instead. You get Aegis Cheese, then yeah. the Chrono doesn't matter so much. Dyer's top shrine is but they're going to lose the shrine instead. This is going to be the full Scotty now completed by the Juggernaut. Team fight wise, it is much stronger though for uh, RIT. It's like one good chrono, Dyer's I think. Yeah. Has I mean, if they if the Omni gets caught, there's no magic immunity for the death for the uh, gyrocopter either because he's not gone for the BKB builds. He's fully attack. reliant on that repel. Very close to the butterfly now though. Under We're just looking for the fight here. Vinar is going to be the target here. They'll tank the gank. That's an exorcism used too, but they do have a rush. They're going to rush. Level 3 exorcism. This will die very fast. I don't think that they're going to be able to respond in time to this one. Where are even actually playing in that aggressive position, trying to just make sure. And that was an Aegis set. And McMaster would have loved to have, but... They could have. Yeah. If they knew that the Roche should spawn there. You got an at least Rocket player. Yeah, that's true. It was a really nice play, though, from RIT. Evident's been getting a lot of value out of results for the most part in this game. Dyer's 
I just don't know what item he gets to protect himself in a game like this. I still think he needs an Aeon Disc. I think you go. I think you go Aeon Disc. I think you go. You can finish your Solar if you want. If not, you just go straight for Aeon. You can go Aeon Disc uh, and Octarina. I think you're okay. The Terrorize actually catches the Jug on the side into the Fiend's Grip. High end. Nice pickoffs. Thank you. They're getting a lot of value out of this Willow now too. I'll take your tribute. So the gold swing goes back the other way once again. This, I mean, this team, these teams are both so evenly matched. Yeah. In this series, and this gyro does have the butterfly completed, but uh, the unfortunate part is when you don't have the Aegis and the cheese, you don't feel comfortable just buying out. This top push though is really aggressive. Doggy, gonna jump forward. He's looking for something here. I don't think he's gonna be able to get anyone though. I think a really farmed Willow now. Has a yeah, hex queued up. Go for hex. There you go. I mean, this is Blink Veil, super standard build. I mean, hex is. Can never complain about a hex. I don't know. I feel like he's. I'm still having trouble, like. Thinking how it's like a core, right? I feel like he could have the same. He could be doing having a lot of the same if he was that support. So I've been seeing, like, even the farm. It's not like he's super farm. He's doing well. But, nah, I just haven't seen too much core Willow. Monkey Forever plays it a lot. Okay. Just like does offlane Willow. Yeah, like top five MMR with it, man. It bottom lane. Right. Another pickoff. Look at the fine here. Looks like his vision. Who's vision for a sec, though? They actually fit the Epi, too. They want to end the terrorize. He, oh, hooks out of it though. Nice hook. Oh, oh, a little die inevitably though. It's like pretty nice jukes, but mid lane, mid. Um, another kill. The dream scenario. Gosh. Evan also popped his ult for that. I think they would like to go mid with this. He's been very liberal on his exorcism. I think he should be though. Yeah. He's playing with his team too. Like, you notice every single engagement, like he's playing Team Dota. I think they recognize that they, they need that damage in the Chrono, like, majority of the times, too. It's like, Void just really doesn't Radiant's cut it. Back door is still activated. Doesn't do anything. Exorcism will end. I actually use the Glyph. Yeah, no Exorcism, no Chrono. That's going to reset things a little bit uh, for RIT. Oh, no, McMaster, who's Glyph on the back door is still active. Yeah. Oh, they're still going to hit this. No Chrono. No Exorcism. Comes the jug with the spin. At the same time, you've got the fiend script going off, but I don't know if you want to continue to fiend script that now. High end. I think he's got the ult. He is going to commit it. Evident. That's just that's a lot of health. They do manage to grab doggy, but really nice cogs. Going to trap both the cores in. And BKB is now completed. Eradicate, shadow bladed up. I don't think they have detection for this. If they did, that would have been another kill for them. And the gold swing goes the other way now. And they didn't have Chrono. Uh, they didn't have Exorcism, but nope. I think they wanted to be able to use that Aegis. Uh, and they got the, 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 the Death Ward actually did so much damage again in the place. <laughs> yeah. Britain is putting in so much work in this entire series. And this is going to be. Was a, I thought that was a little bit overzealous, though, by that. Yeah. It's going to be a huge gold swing now, too, because at minimum, you have to buy back if you want to defend this. Yeah. Do it with okay. Casts oh. are bouncing. Oh no! They're gonna chase with this missile. I think so too. Call down is laid out. So Doggy goes in for the stun. Doesn't quite connect, and this is gonna be. They still have Glyph. Yeah. 20 seconds left on your Death Prophet. I think you have to wait it out at this point. Uh, you gotta. Oh. To get the Chrono off. Looking for high end. Comes the epicenter. The Omni healing a lot now. That's gonna be Doggy down. The BKB void. There's four seconds until Evident comes back up. They've defended the rack so far. They're pushing it with Masters at the base to stun. He's done the jug. She gets four stepped away. Doggy was trying to set up for a two man stun there. Vinar's gonna be the cost of this. And that was that was also Vinar's uh, four step. Yeah. To push away the jug. That's a gem. They really want to get a kill on this witch doctor. 
He drops it. He drops it. That's his offering. <laughs> See, please, guys, I'll give you anyway. So they do get the tower. Uh, they've got that full set of Rex mid. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. And now you've got a very farmed gyrocopter. And Jug. I mean, they both have, they both have passed the death profit in net worth now. Yeah. I mean, team fight wise, you can see that it's not hard for Rochester to win these team fights. It's just they're taking fights on their side of the map. So by the time their exorcism, uh, they get to the base, like it's already done. They need to do more aggressive smokes right now. Try to get out on the map, push out the lanes, then try to set up for these plays. They're, they're starting to get more options though, right? Uh, Xanthos is now level 18, so that Willow solo kill potential is through the roof. It is getting closer and closer to Hex. So yeah. th that's going to make it a lot easier for them to make those kind of plays. I mean, having a Hex could be huge. Could be 1200 away. And high end. They know where high end is with that ward. I'm thinking about it, but they don't see the rest of the team quite yet. Not really sure if they're smoked up behind them or anything like that. You've got an Aeon just completed on this Omni Knight. Switches builds a little bit. Had the Agonims queued up at first. Willow. Oh. Does not get out. Not quite in time. Now they lose the Willow. 60 seconds. Has buyback, but they're probably going to just give up the tier 2 tower bottom, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely tier 2. Hmm. I like the A on this pick up for Omni. It's not even just about the share the proc is great, but this status resistance on Omni Knight is actually excellent. And now, gotta be thinking about the high grounds. Let's eradicate. Not quite at the base yet. Doggy in the corner. Has the epicenter. Get a base ward in. Evident. Keep going out. Gets instantly spirit vessel. There's a chrono. a chrono. Catches two. Is that the healing ward? Comes the epicenter in the back line too. Do they have enough heals though to save this jug? He's getting really low. One more hit would do it. Oh, the GA is saving him. And he oh blink spins out. And the Willow does get the terrorize off. That's going to reset things a little bit. Evident's doing so much damage here right now. And they need the reset. The Omni. Not oh, look at Santos go in. Finishes off the gyrocopter with you now too. High end's got to get out of oh. here. Oh my god, it's so close. They actually only get the jug out. Yeah, the jug. Everyone died for you. Oh, but Bryn? Bryn's trying to be close. Oh, there's no way Bryn lives. It was cute though. It's good attempt, but temp, but I, they all in committed to trying to save this, uh, this juggernaut, but they didn't have their reset abilities. Like in the previous fights, he had healing ward down. When he used the healing ward as soon as uh, the catch happened, it was so hard for them. Uh, if he has it up after that, I think they can probably turn that fight. Yeah, like when you mean like when they go back to the high ground, right? Yeah, yeah. Like back reset. If they have healing ward at that point, I think they can restart yeah. the fight. I think probably. It's just unfortunate, like the way they got the, gr the way they got grabbed out. The chrono catches both of them like perfectly. It catches yeah. the jug and the omni right on the around the outskirts of it. This is a really nice team fight from RIT. Yeah. Like like everything came up perfect. Like the terrorize as well right afterwards, pushes them away so that Evident gets like the full exorcism hitting them. Yeah, it was Same with Eradicate's well Chrono, like we talked about. The downside though, again, is uh, if you're McMaster, you don't mind taking fights like that. Because there's no downside to it. Yes, you lose some heroes and some gold, but you get, you get a chance, right, at taking high ground. And there's no follow-up, I think, for the side of uh, RIT. What does RIT turn this into, right? Yeah, just farm. Yeah, it's just farm. You can just turn this into some farm, push the lanes out. What's he going for? Okay, Satanic will be next on Gyro. And I still, I, I still kind of feel like they need BKB, though. Because Propel is, sure. Propel is great, but if you have BKB on the Gyro there, he can just turn and fight. Right? That's how I feel, too. I feel like you kind of need them. As much as you don't want to, you kind of need to. And Right. This would be sick, though. This would be pretty nice. Aegis Cheese and Refresher Shard. Yeah. But they're a bit afraid. Xanthos, level 20 now. I believe that is pretty much the Hex finish. I'll dig that. Oh, it was a buyback as one well of the last situation from the Willow. Okay, that makes sense. I was pretty sure I'd seen Xanthos die, too. I was like, how did he do so much? To the what? Fight? Flak hits? Yeah, I think he just died to Flak in the last engagement and then bought back. 
Wait, did he buy back uh, while they were going high ground when he was still dead? I think that's what happened, right? Yeah. Okay. So both teams are very aware, like they should be hyper aware of this Roshan right now. Like both teams would use it so well at this point. Yeah, they're constantly throwing rockets in, sinking illusion was in there for a moment. Yeah. Like both teams, I, I don't think either team can afford to give this up. This is the biggest Roshan of the game. I think you kind of have to like sit around Evidin in the mid, because Evidin I feel like he has to sit mid to push this wave out since they lost to Rax. And he's also about to be 25 on Death Prophet. Yeah. That, that haste is absurd. Actually, I rarely see people take the plus spirits. I the haste the is haste. really nice. The I haste is too nice. DP's a mobility hero. Yeah. I need spirits. It's a third more damage. 30% more damage. Isn't it just like another level? Yeah. It's like if you had a fourth level of uh, ulti versus having karma haste. Yeah, I mean the haste is 99.9% .9 the better option. But still. But what if? But what if? So now Hex is completed. By Xanthus. They have a smoke available. Yeah, they do. It's go time. I like the smoke. We talked about how the Roshan's going to be the most important objective of this game. Yep. They got their bottom wave in a decent spot. Mid's... Eh, mid's okay. They're going to go for the long wraparounds. But... Dyer are scanning. That's fine. Dyer go for the scan. Maybe they find somebody in the corner there, but... They're going to get denied that opportunity. <laughs> Evident goes back mid. He's like, I need to make sure that this lane is pushed. Well, you, li you like that, right? Well, yeah. Shoving those That's the correct play. <laughs> he needs to. No, it was, it was perfect. It gives away like his positioning, but I think that's like, you can't have your mid lane shoving in when you're trying to make a smoke play. It's too obvious. Yeah. And then faster, they go for the same play. Oh. Xanthus. Gonna get gone on here. Is Shadow roamed up. Let's hit the blink to get out. He does have Where's a blink, the use, though. The Fiend's grip is really nice, but they don't see the healing ward. And there goes the ult 2 from both sides. The epicenter, he tries to walk it in. This Omni, not quite dead yet. Here comes the Dark Will of Terrorize. Fear on three heroes there. Fear on three heroes. They're trying to isolate out whoever they can. They are going to finally grab the Clockwork at minimum. The Omni Knight, also in a similar position, going to get hexed up, and the damage is there. From the side of Rochester, Probably the best hero that they could have had get gone on. Yes. <laughs> Willow gets gone on. Click Shadow Realm. Didn't even use the blink to blink out. Actually stayed in the midst of the there's, fights using the hacks. There's no other stuns for them. Yeah. Uh, and that was perfect. The Chrono didn't deal a lot of damage. Like the healing ward placement from the Juggernaut was really good, and they got the uh, the ult off from the Omni Knight. Yeah, he got the. But doesn't really matter. Is now they're starting to get overrun here. Like the damage of the Willow is pretty crazy. I completely agree with you on the idea that at least one of the cores needs a BKB. Because this Omni has too many jobs to do at this point. Yeah. I, you have to be able to, like, like sure, like, you think about it, you're like, oh, Jug has spin. But you're not spinning in the midst of a fight. Like, in Gyro, you can't just rely on your Omni Knight having this perfect god mode positioning. You have to be able to give him a little bit of leniency to be able to do his own job in the rest exactly. of the fights. It's similar to last game when we were talking about how uh, it was too hard for the Doom to play game. Yes. Like, right now... Uh, Luki is, I mean, he's gotten very nice GAs off, like the heal, everything's clutch, but there's only so much that you can do as an Omni Knight. Mm -hmm. You got one repel to work with. And half the time he has to focus on healing himself. But if his team has BKB, like, a lot of that damage is negated. Yeah. They, they can already negate the physical damage with, um, with GA, like... I think here, you, I think maybe you can finish, I don't even know if I like finishing the Satanic. It's not a, it's not that bad of an option. I guess you can go, like, Satanic into B, I, I, you just, I feel like you just really need BKB. He has BKB queued up now. Yeah. You're so... You're already there. It's just... It's a lot harder, I think, for McMaster to take fights. If you look at... Uh, if you look at the side of RIT, like, they've got a bunch of hexes. They've got... Yeah. Chrono. They've got Fiend's Grip. There's so many different ways for them to start a fight. Yeah. I mean, the clear-cut initiation for... For McMaster is a hook shot. Like, yeah. That's never really the dream. I mean, Vinar is 2-14 and 14 this game. So he's been getting in there, but... He's been paying with his life. And like these big levels are starting to hit now for for RIT. Level 25 Void, level 25 Death Prop it was done. And with this Aegis Cheese with Refresher Shard 2 and Eradicate, he's got double Chrono. Yeah. I'd really take the fight. You have to catch somebody off guard, get a pick off. And they're so strong at this point. RIT, they've got the game in their hands again. Yeah. See that what win percent. Swing into swing into swing. I mean, even the win percentage has no idea. 
I think the win percentage like heavily favors the building. Just it has to just be buildings, yeah. Because as soon as the buildings got evened, it was even. Yeah, but then the rating got the racks and they got heavily favored. So the the thing that's uh, RIT are doing very well is like the team fights they're set up, but it's been really hard for them to shove out these lanes. Like. McMaster has been very good about constantly putting the pressure on all three lanes. Yeah. They've been, I mean, they've been pretty good at responding to push them out, though. Like, Evan, I think, has been going to, like, every single lane to try to push them out. It's, it's pretty much just him in the jug, though. Or him in the void. Doing and the void doesn't even hit creeps very well. And he does not hit the creeps well. So it definitely is tough. And we'll be a hex. So no more boots. It's level 25 already. He got the more haste, right? Table. Yeah, I got the haste. Evan playing to win. Still not going for BKB on Gyro. Finish Satanic and gonna just go MKB. So they're just putting all this pressure on Luki. So maybe, I guess, with Aghanims, when you have Aghanims on the Omni, you don't have to worry about your positioning so much for that. But getting the repel off still can be hard. Yeah. I think part of the problem, too, is like his positioning has had to be compromised every fight. Because he has to just walk into the chrono range, essentially, yeah. to get his ult off. Like, I'd, I'd even be okay with him just straight up buying out right now. The ping, they know that the void is in the area. He's got that huge Chronosphere AoE on top of double. That was a big push bottom that uh, Binar has started with the clockwork though. As well as top is pushing it pretty hard. Rene are going to fort up. Still's going to come out the missile. Follow up here. Trying to get the glimmer off. They were trying to get the sleep. Yeah, still got the Aegis. Here it. comes the Chrono. The huge Chrono. Jono walks in too. And this Prox. They're switching targets here. Trying to focus down the Witch Doctor. They will be able to claim Bryn. And go back toward those racks. But the split push is happening. Look at Clockwork and Jug. They're at the base. They gotta go back for this minimum. And if you're on the side of McMaster, you just want to try to cancel TPs. Good. Jug's gonna get it. Jug's gonna get it. Clockwork takes the tier 3 bottom pretty much too. Yeah. He does manage to grab the tower and... Look at this mid situation, the jug gets out, and bottom racks is dying to creeps and, and catapults. So they do manage to get the void out of there, but the rage, rage racks is dead bottom, for sure. They're trying to start this fight, they do manage to grab high end. They needed to get something out of this, they're pinging their bottom racks. Dude, look at this clock, that's, that's so the many clockwork creeps. push. That's all that clockwork push. There's like 20 range creeps here, somebody has to get here. They have to take out the siege creeps. Yeah, they're gonna hex one, focus on the other one, so they will lose. Range as well as a melee. The other base is pretty exposed. Did they get any? They did not. They get didn't any. get a single. They just got a tier third. They lost the Aegis, so oh, they geez. traded the Jug for the Bane, and well worth it for Master. Yeah, it's pretty definitely. much a full set of Rex. And that's into a team that had Aegis Cheese Refresher Shard, and you make that kind of play. That was that was really huge. Really smart call. Whoever did that just decided was like, all right, they're heading down mid. Take keep pushing those two side lanes. They're like, we can't fight this. Yeah. Realistically, they've got double chrono. That was, that was very, very good. I really like that. Is that the Ags now completed? Full Ags. And I think he has buyback as well finished. Yeah. Okay. A lot of space coming out. Good amount of farm. I and mean, he doesn't... You notice they, they were trying to chrono, see if they could pop him. Yeah. Does not care. Aeon Discs. Aeon Discs. What is your nullifiers at? Got to purge that Aeon proc off. So now the game for like the fourth time is reset. Yeah. I mean, the graphs are just unbelievable. I mean, it, it's all just about execution, really. Like 2K gold, whatever. 10K yeah. experience, whatever. It's all really just execution and decision making. Like those type of choices to not take the fight and split push. They just didn't expect it, the bottom push. That, dude, I was looking and I was like, there's like nine range creeps. And then I was like, yeah. oh my god, there's like 13 range creeps. But our just like, work. he's like, I'm just going to hit creeps, push this forward. <laughs> um, I, I think on the side of RIT, they're thinking of themselves like, oh, that just means we have one less hero to worry about in this push. They probably just weren't focusing on it very much as they're all smoked up right now. This, they have a high ground advantage in here too. The Rockler kind of reveals where they are. Radicate with the Chrono. Just grabs the Witch Doctor, but now... Caught in an awkward position. I have so much magic damage. And, and this is the kind of fight that they wanted. It's so close to their base. 
Luke is gonna get stunned up now too. And yeah, there's Prox, December, the Refresher Shard. Not enough mana for the Chrono though by 60. The Fear comes out during the Satanic though. Really December. nice timing. Can't really turn that around. That was perfect terrorized timing. And now the Witch Doctor is gonna go down. He's got no buyback. That was the buyback, I think. From from earlier. It earlier, yeah. Yeah, from earlier. So they can transition this into a push. They don't have the Exorcism, but they've got the second Chrono. He immediately ate, ate the uh, Refresher. Yeah, he ate it. I think he wanted to go for the Gyro, but he ran out of mana. Uh, yeah, now they can make their way toward that high ground. Mid lane, there's a lot of creeps. Doggy is trying to just make sure they can protect his, his base. In the meanwhile, Gyro buyback. Here comes the hook. Hex though immediately laid out. Next Chrono. They see December in the back lines there. They're trying to go for him here with the chuck. With the void. He gets her held up. Heal too. The Bane's dead, but so is Venar. And high end. Trying to deal out that damage. They there goes him. Eradicate. And if they could grab Evident as well. <laughs> the stun. The stun, the missile. The TP. The spin. Yeah, that's going to be enough. They wanted to try to get Evident at the same time, but... How soon is Roche? One minute. One minute. If they could get Roche on, uh, McMasters can kind of kind of reset things, but the team fights right now are just firmly the initiation factor is just so strongly in uh, Rochester's favor. Yeah, no, definitely. It's and they're gonna go for a push of their own. You think this is a good idea? If they fail this push, the game leads. ends, right? Yeah, I don't know. I think this is too risky. I think I think they're just trying to force buyback, right? They yeah. got one at least, but I think that's way too risky to go in like that. Sure, it's like we can win. You can get the racks and win, or you can just instantly lose. They need to focus more on the Roche. It's like earlier on there was a Roche opportunity for them, and they weren't able to get it. I think you have to like set up all your vision, get vision all up in the enemy jungle, vision around the Roche pit too. The problem is like I think they have to concede the fact that they're going to get jumped no matter what at this point. You need a nullifier on your jug too. If you're gonna do anything about this DP when she just yules, she's going to abyssal though. Nullifier's the new abyssal. Yeah, nullifier's definitely the choice. I mean, they can't. They pretty much just. If RIT gets this next Roche, I don't see a way for McMaster's ever to really take fights versus them. Yeah. Conversely, if McMaster takes a Roche, then the game is. They could just look to force down. Yeah. Just brute force the last two racks. So Jug right now, hiding in the tree line, trying to just set up for the next wave. This would be such a scary position, right? So they've got no buyback on their two big cores. Either Jug or Jaro died, the game could just end abruptly. And Evident still has buyback. Yeah. Finished up the bots too. Can go for Refresher. Very strong at this point. Yeah. You got the Aeon disc queued up too on the Stark Willow. Yeah, he's, I think he's had that one queued for quite a bit, but that could be, I mean, that could still be really nice. He's not really getting focused so much in control, but. Yeah, they already have a hard time killing him. Yeah. So global cooldown was chosen by December too, by the way. Over the move speed? Uh, over the oh missile. the homing missile charges. That's yeah, right. he actually also told, chose the call down cooldown over the moon speed. So he's oh. all about that split push. It looks like with the call down, shooting it down toward bottom constantly. It's kind of working. Up. It is definitely working. Uh, um, I've seen it. I've seen a couple players do it. Not very often, but it makes it so that uh, it makes it so that Rochester can't just go for like brute force pushes. Like they always have to worry about their their lanes. I mean, it's only a 20 second cooldown on call down. So you yeah. can constantly just keep pushing in those sideways. I was wondering how he used it twice in like one fight. Yeah, Early yeah, yeah. I was really confused about that. And even though you have to worry about this bottom lane, they clear it so fast. There's the call down, down again. again. As soon as they finish clearing out bottom, it gets pushed back into their faces. Goodbye, and even a wave. Tide is money. Doesn't mean anything though if you can't get the Roshan out of it. I think. He took the 20% magic resist on the Clockwork over the Rocket Flare damage. I thought this one would he take the Rocket Flare just to keep that split push going, right? He also took the strength of the uh, battery 
Yeah. The level 25 battery assault talent, by the way, is insane. It's, 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 it's like broken. Yeah. It actually just... Oh. Of battery assaults. Super fun. I think I've only gotten 25 on Clockwork once. So RIT, if building-wise they are behind, but they've won so many fights in a row. They forced out a lot of buybacks. And now their lanes are in a much better position. Get this again, the call down top. Yeah. I mean, they might even be able to transition like some of these call downs into a kill, right? Maybe someone's gonna respond to these pushes. They want to go for top, but and their lack of disables makes this super awkward. No one's even building for it either. Just the abyssal, I guess, on the jug. Omni still has refresher, queued up as he probably needs to. He can't hex. Call done again, bottom. Pushed out. The war of keeping your lanes pushed in. I thought you were going to say war of attrition. I was going to, but... Seemed too on the nose. Yeah, it did. Oh, it took the dur terrorized duration, too. Over what? Over the 200 attack speed. So it's 5.5 second fear. That seems fair. I actually see everyone with the attack speed too, so that's gonna be fun. Be fun to see. Oh, bottom. He wanted him. Yeah. I mean, this gyro is really farmed because he just keeps call downing every wave. I was wondering, I was like, why does he have so many clarities at this point? Yeah, he's just been spamming them, huh? You farm really fast, anyways. The call down is so cheap, though. 125 mana. He's got travels now, and he has buyback. So all eyes on this Roche. Both teams just playing pretty careful. If you could get a free refresher orb onto this uh, refresher Radiant shard onto this Omni, scanning. the back to back. Yeah, 20 seconds of immunity to physical. Which is why we'd still, I mean, we, we were harping on uh, somebody from McMaster to grab the BKB. And they never the did. Yeah. Hey, just actually, continue to go for damage. Yeah, he's just going for rape here last time. So, Rochester took this. This still could get up, abruptly ended with one chrono. Yeah, that's always the scary thing about late game. Eradicate, like as much as I, I like what they've done. Like Evident has left a lot more of this game in Eradicate's hands. Like he's playing this like more team fight oriented Death Prophet, uh, and he's making it so that this chrono like can just straight up win him the game. They might just start the rush. Evident wants to. Scouted out by Rocket right away. I think they're getting fancy. Yeah. He's got the full refresher or finished with buyback now, too, on BP. So, double BKB, double hex, double rule, double ult. What this means, too, is like if they take a fight outside and they want to try to transition it, they finally can. Yep. They can finally actually use the exorcism and then hit the base afterwards with another one. Everyone's getting the items that they want right now. Except for High End. High End's actually stopped farming entirely in this game. And what is... Because it's all being pushed yeah. in by call downs and rockets. The stun oh. comes out. Do they have the follow up here? Top lane, December. It's controlled. It's really fast, but... Satanic, but... Gonna get hexed up. Hexed again. Evident gonna come in with the last second Crip Swarm. Uh, did he, I think he hit the Willow once with Satanic. And it just did nothing. It didn't even heal him. Because the attack damage was zero, and the Aeon just was rocked. <laughs> That's cool. They're gonna go for the Roshan now. Yeah. Pretty strong Rosh though. 37 armor, 12k HP. It's gonna take him a little bit of time, so high end. We'll split push as best as possible during this. They've got Glyph though. Repel. Is that level 25? It is, so it's the long Repel now. Not that 10 second duration. Oh, I don't like that Glyph. Wait, they glyphed. Oh my god, I didn't even see them use the glyph. Yeah. Now, Roshan is open. Evident has popped his ulti. He does have the refresher orb himself. It's at half HP. Yeah, I can't believe they actually glyphed like that. That same thing happened in the last game, right? That like, these teams are very antsy. It's, it's like we can't take any damage on our tower yeah. at all. Am I gonna get to see a Bane level 25 too? Man, I hope he gets some 12 second Phoenix with all. There's no stuns on the side of. Dude, can you imagine? 
He's There's actually going to get level 25 this game. Yeah. There's no stuns on the side of McMaster. I, I genuinely think you can I, get it going I genuinely think time. you take that this game. Yeah. Over what is it? 250 brain sap. The other one's really nice. 250 is a lot. But there's no stuns. I know. I would definitely take stuns. Seven <laughs> There's no stuns. This Omni hasn't gone hex or anything. There's no stuns. He's good. He's going to get that thing off forever. It's just Aeon disc. That's it. He just has to, ho he has to, has to grab anybody but the Omni. Yeah. So now the Jug with the uh, Gyro Dead finally gets the farm. He gets the farm, yeah. He's like, yes, Creep Waves. Haven't seen these in quite some time. Yeah. We're even having item, item adjustments are being made now, too. So Void, who was kind of slot starved, I guess, now going for just full mule near to be able to clear the waves out. Pretty damn good item, too, right? Got buffed heavily. Well, or pseudo buffed. Yeah. <laughs> I thought he'd go for the refresher shard. On himself, on uh, oh, on the void. Right after I saw the Scotty build, I thought he was gonna go his own refresher for that mana. But I thought he was actually. I thought he was gonna go moon shard. Sorry. Okay. He's got what? All right. Okay. So he's so got two cheeses stacked though. Yeah. On the void. And I think that Bane had the refresher shard, but the thing that gave that to. Ah, Willow. I like that a lot. That can be really. I mean, her toolkit is absurd with double spell usages and double items. Yeah. I mean, she could probably kill like anybody with this, right? Double bedlam, double bedlam, double hex. Bottom lane jug just gonna spin out. Top lane, they gotta deal with that wave again. The call down pushed out for the umpteenth time. They're pinging in that area right now. High end got ran into. Just gonna pop the shadow blade. Try to get out. Does manage to uh, escape. It's really just the battle of being able to deal with the creeps. Look at top again. Fall down rocket. Creep wave is gone. This is the sickest way to farm right now for December. It's like just got the chillest time. I don't think that creep wave has left that top that top rack. He switches maelstrom in. He's just been hitting these creeps individually. You don't need that, Scotty, man. You don't need, you don't need something. one of these items. Something. You, you really need that BKB? Man, they're, they're, not, they're not picking you off. They don't even have Disable. Please, Eric. Please. See. <laughs> Called on again, top. All his hard work has been stopped, and it's pushed in again. He just doesn't kill them fast he enough. Kills he kills them the too strong. Oh, he needs the Maelstrom in to kill the creep. <laughs> he just like faster. he heals after he takes. There we go. Oh, there we go, there we go. He switched it in. He's yeah. realizing. He's bringing out the hyperstone. He's like, man, I, I'm not left top for like three minutes. <laughs> he's just getting out pushed by a call down. The annoying thing too is like he's got Aegis. Look at this again. Instantly, as soon as the creep wave spawns, yeah. just a call down. Oh, right he away. missed that one though. He missed the secondary one. Yeah. Ooh. This could be the opportunity. No, now he's just going to tell Vinar to Clockwork Rocket up there, probably, right? No, he used it. He's got five seconds. The next one. We'll find out. Let's see. Oh, gets hexed up. Actually, Vinar is getting gone on. He repelled, though, and he's off. That is the exorcism expended. Yeah. Nice. Eradicate. I mean, now he can push out the waves, though. There's Mjolnir. Good stuff. Puts the MKB away. Smart man. Yeah, they're fighting neutrals right now, not heroes. So December has now got the BKB. Okay. So finally Gyro has... He fi he realizes, like, yeah, there's something really wrong with this game right now. Oh, Minar. Hex. Down on here, too. DD rune as well. Blade mail, four staff, and... They're trying to wait out the, uh, McMaster's trying to wait out the Aegis right now. Yeah. Everyone's got buyback. Everyone's just cut, look at high end. Just now pushing toward top wave again. Dude, they watch my guide. <laughs> push waves in. If you push waves in, the enemy can't make a play. What are the creep scores this game? Let's take a look. 612, 590, 556 on our top three. Death Prophet, Void, and Gyro. Decent last hits. Scan just next to the jug. He was spinning anyway, though. He's fine. Alrighty then.
65 minutes. Some long games. Yeah. I, I think both teams are just super, super close. And in this game especially, there's, uh, like, the overall team play from both teams is... I mean, it's just, it's very smart. I yeah. was, like, McMasters were definitely on, like, we were having a good time in this game, and then they got turned around on, and then they're like, all right, we need to just rely on what they're doing with this call down. They prepared for this from when this gyro was level 20. They <laughs> got this, the level 20 cooldown. Yeah, this, they knew this game was going to happen. They knew that this was going to happen. At the same time, I think Rochester's doing a good job of not uh, panicking or making like any inherently awful moves or anything like that. They grab the Aegis, they grab, they have two cheeses now on the spoil. That's so many different lives. He's gonna get those off too, by the way. Oh yeah. There's no stuns on the side of uh, McMaster. Yeah, he's got the long cast range too at the time walk. Top. They're looking for Doggy. Rocket, not quite catching him. Hook shot off the mark as well. And that's their only stun, so... And that's it. Now everybody else can do whatever they want. Doggy's like, guys, oh, they, they used it. They used it. It's done. Oh, there's a cask, too, Rocket but... On. That's not gonna happen. Doggy level 25. I actually love this talent. The level 25 sanking. The uh, Sandstorm Blind. I feel like not enough people take it. I see a lot what of people take the health regen. 35 health regen. It's a lot. 35 health regen seems kind of mediocre. 50% blind. Yeah. That is an absurd amount. Get sand. An absurd amount. It hurts. Yeah. They're king right now. We get a catch on him though. Bissell, do they have the follow-up? It's pretty tanky. The Omni is it? And that's Gem on the ground. The boots travel coming in from his teammate to try to help. No Gem. They quickly just get the hop. They don't even care about the Gem. And high end. They walk by each other in Shadow Blades, but oh, oh, Shadow Eradicate, Blades Eradicate's got some. Oh, they, oh, they're both farming. They're watching each other. <laughs> what? <laughs> they just like took opposite camps. <laughs> what if they both took the same camp? It's just like, wait, what? <laughs> it's like that, uh, you know, that Spider-Man meme where they're just like pointing at each other. It's yeah, like the yeah, same yeah. Spider-Man. Yeah, he's like, wait, <laughs> you. There <he> goes. <laughs> so Moonshard next December, and then the Rapier, of course, on that gyro as the following. Final items and Moon Shards being picked up on several other heroes as well. Satanic on Eradicate soon. And it is a 12 second kick that is uh, potentially there for our main. So, work. Make it happen then. Yeah. Let's get us a 12 second. What's Word's score right now? 5, 7, and 20. So That's a solid game. game. Actually, I actually haven't even looked at the kill scores. Let's see. Who's got the most deaths? Oh, Vinar. 15. I stopped counting after like 12. Yeah. Everyone's almost 25 too. Clockwork's the only one. Oh, Clock has. Alright. So Clock is like their all in hero. He's the only one that can disable anyone. If they lose Clockwork, like the fight is impossible for them. <laughs> oh, well, Witch Doctor too, sorry. Witch Doctor 25 as well. That 25 is absurd. What is it? 1.5% max voodoo heal versus what is the other one? Damage on your death ward or something. 75 death ward damage. Essentially, like you're you're like a second healing ward, you're like a second jug healing. You're ward. pretty much healing ward, yeah. It's plus one too, so you actually get your forty heal on top of the one point five percent. It's a lot. Of healing. You're just jug. I saw one game with I think it was Puppy who was playing it. And he was healing like two hundred and fifty per turn. Yeah, you're just role playing jugs healing ward. It's top lane. I mean, Rochester has to. We be might have a battle here. Yeah. How long has it been? It's been a while. <laughs> He's just in the sidelines, throwing out waves. That top lane is like the bane of them. No pun intended. But they're gonna smoke now. Oh, they run into each other here at the jug. Let's see the gyro for a second though. Oh, the fiend's grip. Oh, the hook out! But the gyro is caught inside. Does have satanic and BKB satanic though. Satanic as well as the guardian angel. They built a turn here. He's not dying. In He's fact, not. the turnaround potential is quite strong. Oh, the terror it, the terrorize. They get the hex now though, and now the gyro gets finished up. He doesn't get the guardian angel off the secondary one. He's almost certainly gonna go down. And gyro and jug are both dead. The refresher, sh refresher orb was used by Omni Knight. Gets bashed while trying to go back to base. He's dead. Yeah, eventually. It is impossible for McMaster to take fights. Yeah, they just can't. There's too just much. Can't take fights. What did, what was used though on the side of? Um, where a bunch of cheese is used, I think the Void at least used one. I want to I know how long the Fiend's Grip was. 
He had it on the Jug for a while. I think it was like a 9 second feed. Jug didn't get anything off. Yeah. They do have buybacks though. Dude, they might have to use them though. Fights are insane. So Aghanim's now on Witch Doctor. He's gonna he's gonna try to hold for his team. They should all just buy back, right? Realistically speaking, at least at least the, the one or two of them. You can't just hold them all for eight. If the gyro buys back, you might as well just buy Rapier. He's already got the relic. Yeah. Oh. So finally, Rex is taken. His damage is. I mean, his damage is just still so low. When he gets his BKB though off. Uh, and part of the reason why they killed him is he got completely isolated in the trees. Yes. There was no way that anybody was going to help him in that position. We are 71 minutes in. I'm trying to keep track of like what's going on in the fights. There's just so much, actually. <laughs> Dark Willow actually always makes fights really hard for me to keep track of. I don't know why. So I'm just like, oh, this core just died to a, died to a Willow. Yeah. Dude, the Willow core paid off. It did? He's below the sanking in net worth, but who isn't? Who isn't? Radiance Curry oh, has Radiant been killed. That was the Demon Edge. Oh, that was the Rapier that was coming out, huh? I actually got it. If I'm, uh, if I'm RAT, I'm like, guys, that was the Rapier. No Rapier. -a. But maybe you just wait for the Aegis anyways. Maybe he didn't click on it in time. Yeah. They didn't have a ward. He just killed it walking by, it seemed like, initially, because they killed it, like, down low. Hmm. And that courier was had a hard mission. <laughs> it did. You know what you do? You send out a decoy one, get it killed, push out the bottom wave, wait for them to come in the bottom, and then you send the real. Can you even do that anymore? I guess you can. I guess you can send decoy. <laughs> the decoy courier. <laughs> we're so long into the game that we're thinking of decoy, decoy courier, courier strats. Oh, we got oh, we got a nullifier queued up, doggy. First nullifier queued up of the game. I mean, Donkey's a boss. Yeah. Right. Here we go. Right. There's no rape here. I think this is the best move that you can make at this point. Oh, they jump in. Chrono. They found Luki. And on the sidelines, the, the grip. It doesn't have to be 12 seconds with the Willow hitting him. Okay, that is high end down. He Second does buy Chrono. Back. Second Chrono is here, as well as the Terrorize. And Luki is dead. Death Ward is doing a decent amount of damage here, though. The yeah, Death the Ward is actually backlines. forcing all of them out. Okay. That is going to be a buyback on the Void. He's going for the game end right now. Hex is flying out. Here he goes. Here comes the Epicenter. Doggy. I'm trying to find anybody high end. High end here. He has the follow up as well with the up. Hex. December is getting brought down to the back lines too oh, by I the Will on DP. The cores are dead. Nobody's got buyback now. That might have actually done it. I do believe so. After 73 long minutes, they buy a book three on Evident 2 at the base. He's just like, end this game. Now. Get me out. Get me out of this game. They're going for the tier fours. GG is called by Luki. GG. Well done. RIT, they win the war of attrition. They really do. That was. I can't imagine that this is how they expected the game to go or for this to go as long as it did. But I am. Uh, I'm, I like what McMaster did, though. The, the split push thing was really neat when they got the Clockwork Jug pushing out, going for the call down talents too. There was, there was some good stuff there. But overall, I, I actually thought McMaster's as a team. I thought they looked a little bit better than Rochester. I think Rochester just had some more uh, individual individual skill in this last game. They showed that they can actually play as a team more. They played yeah. more more together, and with their draft too, it benefited from that. I really like the adjustment that uh, Rochester made. They're just like, okay, we're playing this like. Individual style. We don't have a lot of team fight. Yeah. We're just getting outdrafted team fight wise every single time. Uh, but this time around, they finally mix things up. They go for heroes like the Void, the Death Prophets. Yep. They out team fight them in the end. But a very, very good series. Like I hope both teams enjoyed playing that. Let me check on damages at the end of this game. Let's, let's take a look. That did some high damage. I'm imagining that Evident did. Yeah, Evident did and the Gyro did, as expected, the two highest. 61k. I mean, Evident went off this game. Yeah, Evident played it really well. 
I'm a big fan of his rotations. He was playing, like, like you mentioned, he was playing a little bit more of, all right, Eradicate, you're going to have to be the one that is like that full carry. I'm yeah. sure going to be really far doing a lot of damage and everything, but I'm moving around the map, making the space. That's pretty much every time he had his ult up. He's just like, pop my ult and go. Yep. Uh, time after time. Do we get to interview somebody? I think we do, right? I'm pretty sure we do. Yeah. I think we get to get one person, right? From the team? Do, do we get, get one choose? person? Do we get to choose? Do we want some of them? No, no, no interview. Okay, we can't. Oh, oh, well. That's okay. All right. Uh, I talked to Evident. We communicated through our eyes, and uh, he said, sorry for that SF game. <laughs> he apologized to his entire team. It's like, that one's on me, guys. But I made up for it in the Death Prophet one. <laughs> We've got that kind of like soul bond where I understood I everything saw off of just that. I saw it. I could tell. I could see yeah. it. All right. So that is going to do it for the best of three. Uh, very well done by Rochester. Closing that out. Yes. Mick. And now we've got what? We've got uh, UC Davis, the home crowd versus Stony Brook. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to take a quick break, and then we will be back as soon as possible for the next series.